Okay, so while everyone else is joining, let me introduce myself. My name is Hazel Waters. I'm a senior advisor on the MBA Missions Recruitment Team here at Oxford Said. And today I'm joined by a fantastic panel of alumni, some recent graduates, some a little bit further on in their journey. So you'll have different perspectives and, and different people to sort of um, gain their knowledge on the Oxford MBA program, on their experience, and on their, I suppose, post MBA experience that they have so far to date. The structure of today will very much so be you guys asking questions. So it's your opportunity to ask live. And um, there is a Q&A function that we ask you to use. So feel free to start writing in there now, writing at the end or as, um, as and when your questions come through. But it, it won't work unless we get questions. So it'd be great if when you have one to please ask it. Um, and our panel are kindly giving up their time today to, to answer them. And we really appreciate them all joining. Okay, I think we'll just let people join and I maybe I might just start. So uh, the first question I have for you guys is hopefully an, an, an easy one, but it's basically, would you be able to introduce yourself, maybe give a little bit of background on what you were doing pre-MBA and what you're currently doing post-MBA? Um, and if we, we can start with uh, you, Kristen. Yeah, absolutely. So hi, everyone. I'm Kristen Brandt. Prior to the MBA, I had founded an NGO for girls' rights and girls' education called She's the First. And so I had spent a number of years building that out and growing it internationally um, before also writing a book and starting to do some impact advising and impact consulting. I really use the MBA as a method of transitioning out of my staff role at that organization. So it was really a bucket of time for me to learn and grow and explore what was available in the world and Oxford for reasons I'm sure we'll talk about really fit that bill for me. Since then, I've been a freelance impact consultant. So I've been working with philanthropic and impact clients on everything from their impact strategy to staffing strategies and some founder and uh, team coaching as well. Fantastic. Anderson, would you like to answer the question? Sure. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm a recent grad and had the uh, privilege and the fun of uh, having Kristen and uh, Abhishek as part of my uh, graduating year. So it's great to see familiar faces. And I've had a back and forth with uh, VP as well. So it's great to see VP on this call, too. Um, my background before uh, coming to the Oxford MBA is a very uh, traditional finance path. I started off as a chartered accountant, uh, did investment banking for a couple of years and worked in private equity for about over five years, uh, I'm Canadian, so most of my work experience was in Canada. And coming to Oxford, I really wanted to jump into something more entrepreneurial. Uh, and so did a lot of uh, extracurriculars in that, which I'm happy to talk more about uh, in future questions. And right now, i am started my own startup focused on trying to democratize uh, financial tooling as it comes to tax and estate planning here in Canada. So I'm part of the local incubator here called Next Canada. Very exciting. Um, Vishnu Priya, would you like to answer the next, or would you like to answer the question? Yes, please? of course. Uh, hi, everyone. Nice to meet you all. So I started my career with KPMG's risk consulting practice, where and I was working with KPMG for about three years. And then I worked with an impact consulting firm based in India called Satwa Consulting. And I came uh, to Oxford to do my MBA. I wanted to make all three switches, which successfully I was able to do, which I can talk about later uh, during the call. And post my MBA, I joined the Pathways program as a Pathways Operations Manager. This is a leadership development program. And I was successfully able to switch within Amazon to a program management role. So now I am a sustainability program manager with Amazon. Fantastic. Abhishek, would you like to go next? Yeah, of course. Hey, everyone. Like Christian and Anderson, I'm also a recent graduate of the MBA class. Uh, before the MBA, I used to work for McKinsey and Company in India and did a lot of work in marketing and sales. I really used the MBA to transition my career into sustainability. So now I am based in Abu Dhabi, working at the first Abu Dhabi Bank as the AVP of the ESD strategy here. So if you have any questions on Middle East, Middle East recruitments, ESD strategy sort of recruitments, then happy to answer those sort of questions. Thank you. Really good. And then Shima, last but not least. Uh, hi, everyone. Nice to be here. So I think I'm the only one who is one of the old MBAs. So I did my MBA in 2020, 2021. So that is during the pandemic. Um, I'm originally from Sudan and I used to be working in international development and humanitarian sector. 
So I worked for the International Committee of the Red Cross, um, UNDP, GIZ, and I was working um, in the ecosystem of Sudan and East Africa. After the MBA um, and after COVID, I have moved to the UK and um, I'm currently working around impact investing, supporting underrepresented founders in the UK get access to finance. Fantastic. So our audience today, I'd say are a lot of people who are in their research phase of looking at different MBAs, thinking about different locations they want to go to, different programs and factors that, that may be important to them. It'd be wonderful if you guys could give a bit of advice on sort of why you chose Oxford in the end. I'm sure a few of you had competing offers or competing things that you needed to sort of sort out before making your final decision. Um, and I suppose when you chose Oxford, did it work out for you? So maybe we can start start again um, with Christian, please. Sure. So for me, I because I was coming from an impact and NGO background, it was really important to me to be surrounded by others who understood what that work consisted of um, and ways to ways to engage in that work from various lenses. And I think something Oxford does very well is it provides a lot of opportunities to think through what impact looks like within business, outside of business, in different sectors from all kinds of different angles. And what I found was that Oxford alumni, every time I talked to them, these were people who really understood those various lenses and were really interested in them. Um, I was also particularly interested in doing a one-year program. You might be able to hear that I'm from the States. Typically, there are two years there. Um, and in Europe and the UK, the average age of students is also a little bit higher, which was important to me as well. So there were a number of factors, but I think it was the social impact element and the types of students that the program attracted that really drew me in. Um, and I think one of the, the great things about Oxford is there are just so many different ways of engaging with the things that you're interested in. So whether that's explicitly through classes at the school, through side projects your classmates are working on, through lectures and opportunities through the wider university, co-curricular, there's just, there are a lot of opportunities to learn and to grow in whatever arena you're interested in. And so that's something I, I really took advantage of. And I think it was really helpful in broadening my lens, broadening the aperture on how I thought about and how I approached impact. Um, and then that really allowed me to think about how I was going to do that in my consulting work and to be able to approach impact, not just from an organizational standpoint within the NGO field, but from a, a kind of broader perspective, which has been really helpful. That's really interesting. We had um, a current student panel last week, so they they the new the new gang, um, and they sort of said there's 340 of us doing an MBA, but there's 340 different MBAs happening because I think you can really like build it whatever way you want to go or whatever way the wind falls that week. But um, yeah, I I I sort of um I reflect that answer. Um, Anderson, would you like to go next? Um, uh, for for me, I actually uh. Was a, was a sponsored candidate uh, originally when I started. I always wanted to do something entrepreneurial, um, but really I uh, was just thinking of coming back uh, and doing my kind of years to pay back. And while I was in Oxford, my reason for joining was similar to Kristen. Like I knew I wanted to do a one-year program just because I wanted to start something entrepreneurial and really wanted to get on that right away. Um, and I also did a master's before this in the States. So I was kind of like uh, schooled out and I really wanted to just uh, kind of start working on what I wanted to work on. Uh, and it was really two parts. One is Oxford's a bit less traditional in the sense that there is this like really impact focus that I really resonated with. And when I came and visited Oxford, which if you have the ability to do so, I highly recommend. Um, I was like, wow, this is incredible in what's offered in the MBA program, but also like outside the MBA program. Um, there's this like saying that you're like one degree of separation away from someone that could be a Nobel Peace uh, Prize winner. Um, and so uh, when I was able to like see the colleges and like network with people outside of the uh, college, I was like, wow, like my entrepreneurial side was like, I'm learning so much in different aspects and uh, being able to cross pollinate. Um, and the brand was really helpful. Um, uh, I know it's like much more bigger in Europe, but it still holds a lot of weight in North America too. So right now, when I talk to investors, when I talk to other entrepreneurs, just being able to say I went to Oxford helps uh, quite a bit. Really good to hear. And 
Vishnu Priya, would you like to answer the question? Of course. So my process of selecting Oxford was very systematic. I actually, because let's just be real, there's so many business schools across the world. So how do you really shortlist? Thing, one thing that I wrote, that I did was shortlist based on geographies. So I sort of knew that I did not see myself in North America. So that automatically eliminated a lot of schools. Then I was left with Europe and Asia. And that's how I planned my um, shortlisting. So essentially in round one, I would focus on primarily English speaking uh, geographies. So that was my priority. That's how I applied to Oxford and Cambridge. And then in round two, I had other backup schools that I thought of across Asia and Europe. Uh, so I think that really helped me uh, in shortlisting Oxford. And then, of course, the fact that it's just a year long program. So in terms of finances and return on investment, also, it made a lot of sense. I, I got through both Oxford and Cambridge, but I ended up selecting Oxford because uh, I just asked a simple question to myself, five years down the line, which brand do you want to be associated with? And it was Oxford. And I that's how I ended up choosing Oxford. And of course, there were a lot of benefits of joining a community in Oxford, as Anderson and everyone else already mentioned. You know, it's not just the side business school you get to be a part of, but it's the rest of the university. And an experience like this, you cannot experience anywhere else in the world, except for maybe Cambridge, but Oxford's better. And uh, uh, yeah, uh, I have nothing else to add. I just want it to be very crisp. That's how I selected Oxford. Wonderful. We might have to clip that last sentence and, and use it on social media. Um, no, brilliant, we wouldn't. But Abhishek, would you like to answer the question? Yeah, awesome. Uh, I think everyone has already covered all the reasons that we sort of have. Uh, but I think the reasons that were very personal to me were, firstly, I was solving for diversity. So I wanted to be a part of class where people are coming from different countries. And a lot of the schools that I was finding was majorly based with people from one or two nationalities versus in my class, I had over 65 nationalities. So I think that was very helpful. Secondly, I knew I wanted to transition to sustainability. And there's a lot of stuff that happened in Oxford outside of side also that really helps build your career in sustainability. So one thing that I did was that I was a fellow at the Oxford SDG uh, Fellowship, which helped me learn about sustainability throughout the year and also helped me get a summer internship at BMW. Uh, and lastly, I think I was really solving to be in Middle East also. And Oxford has a very big alum community in this region. So it not only helped me get a job, but also my first bunch of friends in this geography are people from Oxford and those are the people that I'm sort of hanging out most with. Brilliant. And yeah, it's good to talk about sort of the wider university and everything that, that comes with that as well. Um, Shima, would you like to answer the question? And then we will go on to sort of the Q&A &A box. I can see questions are coming in. I can see the alumni are already answering you guys. So do feel free to keep sending them on. But um, in the meantime, Shima, if you'd like to give your answer, that'd be really helpful. Yeah, I feel like everything has been said. Obviously, Oxford is known for being um, a very, very diverse MBA program um, and extremely focused on impact. So these were two things that were very important to me. I've had a kind of non-traditional approach to the MBA because I, I didn't want to do business school. I wanted to do a master's that would allow me to get practical experience in, in, in impact because I was doing international development. And just browsing the different masters looking and looking at economic development and public policy masters i didn't really feel that they would fit what i'm looking for and and i business school wasn't on my mind until i found the oxford mba because of the big focus on impact and um a lot of the things that i've had throughout the year i'm i'm using now in in impact investing and um i'm connecting them to my previous experience in international development. I didn't feel like an outsider, like an imposter, um, coming into business school, coming from an untraditional background. And one thing that was just because of the circumstances of being here during the, the pandemic was how friendly and how um, approachable everyone was. And, and it, it made the experience feel much, much, better and much less stressful during the pandemic and i feel like this is this is just how 
people who come to Oxford are. Um, they are people who are coming from impact backgrounds and coming to create networks that um, want to do big social and environmental um, changes in the world. So just by the sheer fact of their focus on impact, they form a very beautiful community that um, that is beneficial throughout and after the MBA. Thank you. That was a really nice and sweet answer to sort of to finish to finish off my questions. I'm going to hand over now to your guys' questions. So thank you very much for submitting them. The first one I I'm going to throw it out there, and if any of you want to answer it, feel free. If any of you want to sort of add on, do feel free to do so as well. But the question I'm going to ask is, how did you know you were at the right stage in your career to pursue an MBA? So if anyone wants to sort of touch on that point or feels like it's reflective of, of their journey. Maybe I can take this one. Okay. Uh, so I think I had a very clear idea that this is the right time for me for an MBA because I was, so in my consulting journey, I was pretty much at the point where a post MBA would look like. And if I had stayed any longer, you know, in the consulting area, then probably my MBA wouldn't have given me back as much as I wanted in terms of career progression. So I thought like, this is the best time for me to sort of get out, get an MBA. Uh, and then transition my career. Uh, I'll just add to that, um, that it's a really good time to reflect and um, and make the next move. So if you feel like you are at a place where you want to change geography or sector or function, you want to make a change in your career, then an MBA is a really good place because you get access to networks, but you also get access to a lot of opportunities after the MBA where you can um, easily switch to any of, of the different sectors or geographies that you're interested in. Um, and just really to upskill yourself um, and and get um, get more knowledge in your area and, and in your field. So if you feel like you are stuck or you are kind of plateauing in your career, I think it's a good time to do an MBA. Yeah, I agree. Sorry, Hazel. Oh, go ahead. Um, if you're someone on this call and you're thinking like you didn't spend your last six to eight years planning out getting an MBA, that's also okay. Um, I ended up doing this MBA. I never thought that I would get an MBA. It wasn't something that was really in the in my career plans it wasn't something that I had previously thought about much and unlike some MBA or prospective MBA students it wasn't something I had kind of planned toward um but what I realized in doing research for that kind of one-year programs that would fit the bill of helping me to widen my my perspective and my views on the world was that an MBA and the Oxford MBA in particular was a really good way to explore the world from a lot of different angles. Um, and I think that there aren't actually a ton of post-grad programs that allow you to explore in, in quite that way that an MBA does. And so I just want to kind of put a call out there for those of you who are on this and thinking like, oh my God, I haven't spent the last five years prepping for GMAT and all of these things. Um, that's also okay. And I think one of the biggest strengths of the Oxford MBA program is like Anderson said earlier, it, it does kind of sit a little bit outside of what you might expect from some typical MBA programs, particularly if you've been looking um, in the States. Really good question. I think on the recruitment and admissions team, most certainly we are constantly asked, like, does my profile fit? Do I fit in the cookie cutter mold of MBA? Um, and I, I think it's a good question to ask, but I think we find it like an odd question because we just assume everybody is good enough to be here. If you've got a reason to be here, if you've got, done a strong application and all, it makes sense and the program's going to make sense for you. Don't count Oxford out or don't count yourself out from Oxford. And um, especially if it's something that you have aspired for a couple of years or are just starting to think about, um, I suppose coming to this webinar is sort of a, a good first gauge to see sort of, you know, the, 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 you know, who potentially could be reflective of, your classmates or your batchmates or, or what they would look like. But um, yeah, I think it's important to sort of 
not put yourself in a box so much. If you meet the application requirements, you think the program makes sense. I think it's it's well worth applying. Um, brilliant. Okay, so slightly different question, but this is actually Anderson. You have been sort of tagged. The question is, they would love to hear more about the entrepreneurship opportunities available within and outside the MBA. Anderson, would you like to answer that question first, maybe? Yeah, definitely. There's there's so much um, at Oxford that it becomes a bit overwhelming. Um, and navigating that is a little bit of the tricky part. I think there is this state of, it's a good problem to have. You're like, I'm high considering all the options that are out there. So uh, happy to take it offline just because there's so much, but I'll, I'll touch on some of like the big ones I did that I found really helpful. Uh, one is just like definitely utilizing SBS. You have um, the, uh, there's going to be OBN. So there's uh, Oxford Business Networks. Uh, I think that's what it stands for. Um, but within your MBA, you'll have um, kind of clubs formed and there's going to always be a club every year that's focused on entrepreneurship. They, uh, if you want to get really involved, you can like kind of uh, apply to try to be the leadership team and your cohort could vote for you. Uh, I was just a participant, um, but really stayed close to those that were leading that team. And they were able to kind of really flag a lot of the events that were happening within SBS, but also outside of SBS. Uh, so you'll have like a lot of cool speaker events. Like we had the co-founder of Starbucks come um, and speak to us, which was like really inspiring. Uh, and he was just doing like really off the cuff um, consulting help to people when they were asking questions. Um, and so really utilize that group. Um, and then I would say that there's also uh, something called the Oxford um it's called the Ox One uh, Incubator. Uh, and so I was part of that as well. You apply to get into it. Um, it's not too competitive for MBAs just because you have a decent resume coming in compared to undergrads or other grad students. Um, and you're, they have this program where they kind of try to run a traditional incubator where they try to match people together. You kind of pitch your idea. There's opportunities for funding. Um, and there's lots of opportunities within um, the Oxford Entrepreneurship Center that sits within SBS for a lot of pitching competitions for you to practice, but also for you to get pretty sizable um, events, uh, sorry, sizable prizes. So um, I didn't really have a tangible business um, until kind of the summer of my um, kind of my MBA. Uh, but there were some competitions that you got up to like 25,000 pounds, 50,000 pounds that were like quite uh, attractive and really good to kind of seed your initial funding. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll pause there. There's uh, happy to, yeah, if anyone wants to message me on LinkedIn, happy to chat more about all the other uh, things you can do. Thank you. There is also the Entrepreneurship Center. Do you have like a, a brochure and they have like, it, it's a really like, it's, it, I love the brochure. It sounds really sad to talk so much about a brochure, but it's really, it does show sort of all the different aspects. It is about 35 pages long. So that's probably why Anderson can't go into sort of every aspect. Um, and I think it will be different based on your journey, based on your business, based on, you know, how you, you come across it. Maybe it's something you do on the entrepreneurship project yourself, or maybe you're coming with one or you want to work on as well. So there's probably different resources for like the different stages of, you know, business you, you, you are coming with. Does anyone else want to add anything to that point that they found useful or they'd like to sort of contribute? Okay, um, let's move on to the next question. And this is a question we get a lot. And I think it's really good to hear from alumni, but how was the teaching design? So I suppose it's more like when you were in class, what was the teaching like? Um, what were the classes like? Would anyone like to take that one? Yeah, I could take that one. So I was from a batch, but I was still sort of practicing hybrid, but I think um, uh, the pedagogy would stay the same. Uh, we would get case studies that we would have to prepare beforehand and then walk into the classrooms and the prof professors would have these uh, pre-made slides, uh, just discuss using the, those slides to further discuss the case studies. It was all discussion-based. It was not a one-way process. It was a two-way process, which I really liked. So yeah, that's what it was like. And of course, apart from the classrooms, you also had other sort of extracurricular activities through which you learned within the school. Uh, happy to talk about them in detail, but most of the information is like available on the website. If anyone wants to add anything to it, and uh, just to add to that, that there are a lot of um, interactive experiences. So the entrepreneurship project and go to are kind of the unique and flagship aspects of the Oxford MBA because you get to do teamwork um, around for go to. It's the global opportunities and threats Oxford where you do um, a challenge. So you you 
pick a challenge and you do kind of a system mapping, systems thinking around that challenge. And I think this is very unique to Oxford because you get a lot of exposure and you can do this with a, with an organization like the UNDP or um, um, any other kind of international development organization. Um, in my in my year, and I think this has slightly changed now, we've had different tracks from health to uh, social to economics to um, climate. So it was a really eye-opening experience. I didn't have any experience working in health and health health healthcare. So I picked the challenge that was in health to get more exposure, um, working in a team and submitting like a systems map and stakeholder analysis was was very engaging. The entrepreneurship project is similar where you build a startup from scratch and, and you use all the frameworks that you get taught through the modules to implement that. And then by the end, you have a presentation and a financial model and, and all the business aspects. So, so this interactive, engaging um, part in the modules was very helpful. I think just one more thing that I'd like to add is about the electives. Uh, so for the last four terms, in a way, you would have electives that you can choose from. So if you like sustainability or marketing or finance, then you can choose a lot of specific electives that are in that topic. Or if you want to choose one of finance, one of marketing, you have the liberty to sort of choose your own subjects and learn about it in depth. Uh, there's something called as an international elective also, which was an highlight for me. About 50 of us went to South Africa and got to do a small exchange with University of Cape Town and learn about business over there. One thing I'll I'll add to all of this is I think, you know, it's because there are so many different class options to choose from, including electives throughout the rest of the year, and you have a bunch of classes that are going to be required, I think your mileage may vary on how you find various classes. Um, so there are some classes that you just like you have to get through because it forms part of the basis of an MBA education. And, you know, for me, at like firms and markets was just not going to ever be my favorite class, no matter what they did. Um, but that being said, I think one thing that um, is really incredible about Oxford is that whoever is standing at the front of that room is probably on the breaking edge of some amazing research or idea or working on something really incredible. And so one of the things I'd really recommend when it comes to the teaching and it comes to the professors is like look your professors up and see what they're up to. Um, because you might have somebody standing at the front of the class teaching you basic analytics and you're kind of like slogging through to figure out how to make a model work, but they're actually spending the majority of their time figuring out how to get AI to predict heart attacks. Um, and all of a sudden that like, you know, that class on modeling analytics becomes not only much more interesting, but also you can kind of see how this starts to apply to the real world and to things you might be interested in. So, you know, I think the, the one thing to keep in mind too is just do that extra step of looking up who are the people who are teaching you um, because they tend to be pretty incredible folks. Brilliant. Um, thank you, guys. I think it's something that often isn't on the website, so people do want to ask the question. I think it's because it's a hard thing to put into a website, especially with everyone's experience is slightly different. The topics they do every year are slightly different. So I think it's really good to hear from your guys' personal experience of what it was like and that it isn't just sitting and taking notes. I'm sure there's like a really big chunk of doing that as well. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it's good to hear. I'm going to answer asked the question from Mary and um, she has said thank you so thank you Mary for joining as well but she said her question is considering the fact that it's a one-year program was there an opportunity for a mandatory summer internship with industries you would like to work with and if so what is the duration for the summer internship so I'll start by saying yes you can do an internship during your sort of long vacation or the summer term and um, but I'll let the guys sort of answer on maybe you know how they approach the internship if they did one didn't do one if it was beneficial and um, if anyone is particularly feeling strongly about that one do do feel free to answer that one um yeah I, I can kick it off um I found the summer period like really build your own adventure which was really exciting um and I kind of answered it written as well but I'd say like a third of our class went to like more formal internships people took 
kind of courses. Um, for me, I kind of like, honestly, I did a bit of everything just to really soak up all the Oxford experience and also just wanted to like really make sure what I was going to is what I wanted to do. So I was working on my business uh, in the entrepreneurship center. So um, that was really uh, fun and was working with a lot of other founders during that time. Uh, and just to be able to like pay the bills I did. Uh, and I also wanted to get a lot of ed tech experience. Um, so I was actually interning at a, at a US ed tech, which was fully remote. So it gave me that uh, flexibility. Um, and uh, so that was really fun and, and helped um, kind of gain some of that experience. And then I also still took electives um, just because there were so many cool courses uh, that you were able to do. So um, it, you can formalize your internship and, and then that, have that fully count for your summer credit, or you can still take electives and do a bit of uh, choose your own adventure. I think it depends a lot on your career goals too and where you are in your career. So if you're a little bit earlier career and you're looking at going into some of the more typical post MBA routes, so you're consulting your finance, those kinds of things, um, an internship is something they're going to be really looking for and can be really helpful getting you through the door. If you have more of a non-traditional background, you know, it might be helpful or interesting to transition into an area you want to be in. But I think for me, I ended up doing electives um, and working with a, a private client. And I think for me that that one year went by so quickly. I was like, if I, you know, I'm never again going to have an opportunity to take Oxford classes. So let me just like go ahead and um, do these last two and um, soak up a little bit more of what it means to be in, in Oxford as a student. Maybe I can go next. Uh, sorry, uh, Shema, you should go. I'll, I'll go after you. I, I will go just because I have a, a point um, related to what Kristen said. Uh, I did a remote internship, which I kind of got the best of both worlds. I got to stay in Oxford and still be around the university during the summer. And by the summertime in our cohort, restrictions were mostly lifted. So I got to do formals and be in Oxford and just, be around my my cohort um but the it it really depends on your preferences and your kind of post mba plans the internship for me was important because i i wanted something in impact investing that would allow me to enter the space so i did an internship with a foundation in the us um but a lot of people choose to do um uh, electives because it will allow you more time to do job search for example so it really depends on your preferences, but these are all valuable um, options. Abhishek. Yeah, thanks. Uh, so I think it really depends on where you are in your career and what you're trying to do. For example, if you're trying to transition your career, then doing a summer internship would obviously help you because then you get a chance for a PPO. And nonetheless, you also get a chance to show that you have learned something about a new topic formally in an organization. Uh, so for me, I was transitioning my career from consulting to sustainability. So I did a two full month uh, internship at BMW. Uh, but the good news was that I was still able to stay in Oxford because there's a BMW plant, which is like two miles away from Oxford. So I could go go work there and then come back in the evening and enjoy uh, the formals. Uh, so that way, I think it was super helpful. And also the summer internship was sort of the baseline that helped me get my job now because then I could prove that all the things that I had learned at Oxford, I'd gone back and applied them formally in a company. And then this is what I could bring on the table for them. Yeah, last point to add, uh, Hazel, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, the, is there still a bursary offered for the internships, which are not paid? Because at my time, you could you had the liberty to you know work with uh, NGOs and early stage startups who would not be in a position to pay you, but you could really learn from them. And that's what I did. I did a product management internship with an Oxford, uh, uh, let's just say, an, uh, a company that uh, came from the Oxford MBA program called Luna. Uh, they're building an app uh, for female teens and I think non-binary teens, everyone, whoever, whoever needs it, it's there. And I did product management internship with them, had a really good experience. I was required to go to London twice a week. So again, I could have the best of both worlds. I was in Oxford most of the time. And I got the bursary from Oxford uh, to do that internship. 
So never worked in product management before. It was a great experience, as everyone said. If you want to experience something new, this is the time. Brilliant. I think this question sort of complements what we just talked about, but someone has asked about pre-MBA internships. Did any of you guys do a pre-MBA internship? Would you advise to do one? Do you know a colleague who did one and it worked out? Like, what do you guys, sort of what would be your feedback about thinking about doing a pre-MBA internship? Um, I, I did a pre-MBA internship um, and uh, it sounds similar to this individual asked the question. I had a few months before I started the MBA. Um, and so I was at that time really interested in, in ed tech. Um, that was the ed tech um, internship that I actually did in the summer as well. So it kind of paid off um, where I built these relationships. Um, basically, this company was trying to get acquired by another company. It was someone I had for my network. And so I actually like kind of pitched them to get the in uh, internship. Um, and I was like, hey, like you, you might need help. Um, and it really like my main reason I did it is I really wanted to understand if ed tech was something I really wanted to build a company in or wanted to join an early stage ed tech. So I know this individual says that it doesn't really fit with their post MBA goals. I think what's really interesting is uh, they know you're there to kind of help them out and it's a short amount of period. So come up with like your job description of like what you want post MBA and the titles. Um, and then you can kind of like, can like, Kind of negotiate with them to try to set up your resume so that it can kind of help you post MBA. So if you're in, interested in consulting and maybe you can try to get that pre MBA internship to say something around like you being a consultant and then hit that kind of job destruction in your in your uh, the work that you're doing there. One thing I'll just add to is once you're admitted, and I'm thinking maybe you have been based on this question, but you can reach out to the Career Center because this is something that's going to be probably pretty nuanced for you is how you want to position it and specifically how you want to think about the work that you can do so you get the most value out of it post MBA. So I would definitely suggest like having that conversation with the Career Center now um, because it can help you to create the plan. Uh, the only 10 cents that probably I have on this is that I did not do a pre-MBA myself, but know a lot of classmates who did it. And the reason they did it was because they wanted to transition their career post the MBA. So wanted somewhere to start and show some experience on their resume. For example, a very typical transition from consulting is to VC. So doing a pre-MBA VC or private equity really helps your story when you actually sit for recruitments during the MBA. Brilliant. Thank you guys very much for answering that question and a good few perspectives there as well. And um, we have been answering questions in the background, not me, the alumni have. So thank you very much, guys. They're absolute powerhouses answering the questions. So hopefully you have felt that your, your, your questions being answered. One that I might ask live, because I think it comes up um, quite a lot, is about colleges. So Oxford has a collegiate system, if you don't know about it or you do know about it. I think based on these questions, lots of people are very in tune with the collegiate system. But I'd love if you guys could just maybe talk about your experience in either picking one, which I know a lot of our current um, admits for next year are doing right now. And if you can talk about maybe your experience there and if you've got any advice for people who are attending today. I don't know who wants to take that quite very broad question, but... I can, um, I can take a question and just give an overview of kind of our interaction with colleges as MBA students. Um, so we we typically don't get involved very much with the colleges. Um, Oxford has thirty eight, I think thirty seven or thirty eight colleges, and as um as the MBA is very demanding and it's very condensed. It's very difficult to do a lot with the college, but I I would advise to still find time and make time to meet with people from the college and get involved in extracurricular activities. So I was at Lineker College, which is a very young college. Uh, 1964 is when it was uh, established um, versus some 12th century or 13th century colleges. Um, so my interaction with the college was that I lived in college accommodation I was in the rowing team of the college and I had a lot of friends who were doing DPhils and masters um, in other departments that were not business school. 
so that was a lot of great exposure to the rest of the university and uh, and again because of covid and the uh, nature of our class that was a much um, better experience to get to attend events online with with people from my college um when less less things were happening in person so Overall, the college does not affect your MBA experience just because you don't get time to interact with the college that much. But there are so many different colleges, different cultures with, with every college. Um, and you can choose ones that you feel you want this particular experience. So for example, if you want a very old college with the quintessential Harry Potter dining dining hall, you can apply to uh, Christchurch or Maudlin or um, New College. But at the end, it really doesn't matter because you can have a friend in that college who can invite you to the to the formal. So yeah, that's just an over overall overview of the college system. But if anyone wants to add more from the non-COVID years. Yeah, I can share my personal experience. So I was a part of Green Templeton College, which has the most number of MBAs. But I would say I uh, chose GTC instead of GTC choosing me. Uh, the reasons were, of course, uh, the accommodation. So GTC had a, an accommodation, a stone throw away from side business school. And I wanted to be very near to the school so that I could do my early morning classes in peace, uh, you know, go go to the school like five minutes early. <laughs> and um, apart from that, because GTC had a lot of MBA students and it was an all post-grad college, which meant that I was usually uh, surrounded by business school students or people pursuing PhDs and very cool topics. Uh, and the third reason was GTC offered a lot of scholarships for various uh, events. So for example, I was able to get my entire expenses reimbursed when I had gone for uh, the HEC Paris MBAT. So different colleges offer different things. Uh, maybe this is one way of shortlisting colleges. What are you really looking for? Uh, I was also able to get involved with the college by uh, uh, getting elected as the entertainment officer, which meant that I was usually working with other colleges to organize formal dinners. Uh, and I had perks as well because I got all my formal dinners for free, whatever I organized. And uh, uh, so this this was one way, a way of uh, just getting involved with college. I know a lot of people who played sports, uh, represented the colleges, uh, were a part of um, various other roles within colleges. So uh, yeah, MBA is hectic, but you could find some time to still be involved with your college. Thank you very much, guys. I know it's quite a, a very big question and then again how like relevant it is, is to you guys is, is important as well and um, this question sort of comes I suppose I probably should have asked it a little bit earlier but the question is how are assessments typically conducted for the courses in the MBA program additionally when are exams usually scheduled would anyone like to take that question or is everyone suppressing assessments and doing any sort of like examination style things during the MBA? Does anyone remember what you do? So it it does vary a bit year to year. Um, the vast, vast majority of our assessments were, um, were either written assessments or some project work. Most of them weren't written examinations. I think um, I think I had three written examinations the entire time at Oxford, um, which is kind of a little bit fun because you dress up in your sub -vesk and you get your carnation, you go to the beautiful university hall and then you have to take an exam. Um, <laughs> but everything around it is uh, quite cute. Um, that said, you know, I think the vast majority of assessments are really designed to get you to think about bringing together all of the elements that you've worked on throughout the course. So they're not designed to trick you or trip you up. Um, and they're also not just going to be like, it's super easy to get a distinction, it's not, but it is an opportunity for you to think about the different strands that you've been learning and how to kind of pull them together and tie them together. And so in a lot of ways, 
the assessments end up functioning as kind of the last piece of your classwork of really understanding the concepts, applying the concepts, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, I don't know if that's helpful. The timing does vary, but the way the class structures work is that each term in the MBA is broken into two blocks. So you end up having assessments like week five, week 10 of the of the term and then that continues and and repeat so you can kind of plan it out that way if you know what the term dates are it's always the like week five and week ten of the structure really helpful thank you we had a student panel last week in in the school i know a few you've done a few of our student panels whilst here as well um, and we asked like what is a highlight and one student just kept talking about the exam school he was like it's the best experience ever and he's like and then afterwards you get to drink on the streets of Oxford which is not something we advocate but I think for him it was like one of the best moments I don't think it will be everyone's favorite moment but um, yes e even exams can be sort of uh, an interesting undertaking at Oxford the next question I'm going to ask and I feel like a few people have asked something similar along these lines is do MBAs get opportunities to work on projects with companies slash organizations as part of coursework, like capstone projects, et cetera? So I think we have a couple variations of that about working with companies or businesses or, you know, them coming to campus. Would anyone like to take that sort of live? I can quickly take that. Yeah. So it, it varies from um, a course to another course. So one of the courses I took was the impact investing course where um, Ani who teaches the course brought kind of she she had two different approaches one work with a company that is raising and one work with a fund um or create a fund with your team so working with a company she uh, brought kind of a lot of social enterprises and we got to work with them each team had um each person sorry had an assigned company to help them figure out what type of funding they can apply to and what kind of investment works for them. So that was really good because I got to work very closely with the company over over the course period um, and in, engage with them on a, on a structured way. Other courses didn't require this interaction, but we're kind of asking you to use the frameworks and apply them to a to a company. So I would pick a company of my of my own choosing and reach out to them and and do this coursework with them. But it really depends the the only the only two that I can think of that offer this interaction were the impact investing and go to. But I don't know if uh, other people had different experiences. I was a part of Creative Destruction Lab where you work with a lot of early stage startups. I ended up, I was, uh, I think, in the finance stream, and I ended up working with a digital identity startup based in uh, France. So I created the pitch deck with them. Uh, but apart from that, uh, I don't think I worked with any company of sorts, except for the internship that I did during summer break. Perfect, thank you very much. Um, most of the questions have been answered now. So if you do have any, and we've got a couple of minutes left, feel free to, to shoot them in and we will try and answer them. I think sort of a theme of other questions that I might ask you guys live as well is about application tips. Have you got application tips? Our application hasn't changed relatively too much. So hopefully if you remember it or you remember your interview process, if you could give the audience maybe a little bit of tips and tricks on what they can do um, or how you approached it and you, you felt that it got you across the line. Um, the biggest advice that I would have is to be very clear in your applications as to why an MBA can uh, move you from point A to point B. So MBA needs to be a bridge between where you are and where you want to be, and that should be very explicit. So if, let's just say, uh, you are working in uh, consulting, and then post MBA, you say that you want to go into um, investment banking. So that wouldn't really make sense unless you have the relevant experience, right? Let's just be real. In one year program, you would not be able to learn everything about investment banking uh, that is there to offer. So you have to be very, very realistic, whether is it 
that you want to climb in your industry or whether you want to change your geography. And if you want to change your function, then what are the transferable skills from your current job that added with MBA could help you reach to your final goal? So don't think of an MBA as a magic wand or a tool. Think of it as just a bridge between uh, point A to point B where you want to be. Be very clear in your application. I couldn't have said that better myself. So thank you very much. Um, yeah, I think a good a good part of your application to look at is your post MBA plan. The committee want to see that what you're saying sort of gets you, you know, makes sense that you're well researched, that you've been reflective, that you know the market, that you know where you want to go to, and to see that the program makes sense for you. I think I've already said that, but just to reiterate on that point, and um, it'd be great to hear from you guys as well. Maybe your interactions with. The career development center or if you found that helpful then when you did come to the mba after doing this amazing post mba plan that you sort of formulated has anyone got any um yeah bit, bits of i don't know something something to speak about the career development team maybe i can share a little about it uh so i did have a slew of interactions with the career development center and they were super helpful in a bunch of way for example if you go and are specific to them that hey I want to work for a public sector or I want to work in sustainability. Can you help me connect with someone? They'll make sure that they connect you either to some experts or to some alums so that you can get more clarity on what that job role really is and how can you go about recruitment. And secondly, obviously, they'll help you also make industry connections. So if you're looking for jobs in a particular field and you're interacting with them continuously, then whenever the job opportunity comes, they will for sure make it a point to highlight to you about about the availability. And just to add, um, being someone who graduated almost three years ago, I still reach out to the Career Development Center and people are really, really helpful. And um, they're, they're always there to connect you uh, to to our alumni that they're in touch with or to industry advisors um and and the support doesn't just stop after the the one year that uh, you're in the MBA um so yeah just from my own experience it's been really useful to get to speak to people in different industries covering different industries because they will have nuances on that industry and geography and they can connect you to alumni and um the network of the school from even executive MBAs and other people who did different other courses. And I think just one more thing that I forgot to mention was that they were very helpful in helping me learn about how recruitment works in different geographies. Because when you talk about Middle East, there's a very different way that, you know, recruitment will happen here. And then even when I was negotiating my salary, they were super helpful in helping me understand at what level the market operates, what is the price that should be quoted on a certain thing, and then how do you actually talk through them to you know, get a better salary? So I think they were very helpful even after you get a job interview and a job role. That's really positive to hear. It's really lovely to hear not only sort of how you could avail of them on the program, but they are still available post MBA, um, which is something I think a lot of people do do worry about um, that they, they'll lose that resource. So thank you guys. We just have a couple of minutes left and all of the questions have been answered. So hopefully everybody found the session really helpful. Um, I would like to go maybe around the panel and ask you guys if you could give, it, give us maybe your highlight from your time on the Oxford MBA either within the university or within the business school. Maybe Shima, you're at the start of my um my list there. Would would you like to answer that question first? And then if everyone else has a think whilst she bravely answers first. Yeah, I can I can take that one. Um and I said this earlier and this might sound very cliche, but my highlight is the people. I've met people during the MBA that I'm really close with now. Um and I made amazing connections and and they lost and it's it's just an amazing network to be, to be part of uh there is the oxford experience being in in oxford and and experiencing the kind of old colleges and um and and everything but 
uh, the people and the connections that you make during the MBA is what mattered for me. And that's what I got out of the MBA with. Fantastic. Abhishek. Uh, so for me, I think it was a trip that 75 of us took to Egypt. Um, so 75 of us flew on, on probably like one plane to Egypt, spent five days with each other. And that was, I think, a highlight for me during the MBA. Very exciting. This year, I've just come back from Switzerland, I think. Um, so yeah, every every year there is there is opportunities to, to trek. And I think someone did ask that question. I think Anderson didn't really run out of places to mention on, on treks that people did. So that, that's really lovely to hear. Um, Vishnu Pri, would you like to answer that, that question as well, please? Yeah, I think my answer is going to be people as well. And just the fact that our cohort was so diverse, you could literally, you know, learn about so many cultures and so many countries by just engaging with people on one-to-one. Uh, uh, -one. You wouldn't, I mean, just the way classes were uh, designed, uh, a lot of group activities took place where uh, you did not have to decide the groups, right? The groups were already decided for you. So you uh, let's just be real. Sometimes you're not comfortable with reaching out to some people, uh, but these activities uh, really made it really easy to get to know uh, your entire cohort. And you would end up doing things that you might have never, never done before. For example, my biggest highlight was skiing. I've never skied before. I'm so scared. But uh, I was with this amazing group of friends. We went to the mountains and we skied. It was an amazing experience. And second, you just learn so much. You When you step into the program, you don't even know what you don't know, right? Uh, when I was getting into the program, I honestly did not think that two years down the line, I would be in sustainability. And uh, I got introduced to the entire concept of sustainability when I was in the program. So just keeping a very open mind, uh, I would say, yeah, it was all derived from people, right? It it all happens through your classmates. So you if if you end up choosing Oxford, if you're here, just make sure that you interact with as many people as possible because you will really, really miss that one year. Yeah. Oh, that's a look that's a lovely note. That was like I enjoyed that. <laughs> Anderson, would you like to give your answer of your highlight? Yeah, my highlight um was really from the summer, but it kind of stemmed from across the year. Uh, just realize you have 300 plus people that are always there to either give you advice in various different ways. Like they've done incredible things in your career and personal lives that kind of brought them to Oxford. So uh, in the summer, it was more towards my entrepreneurial venture where we had a bunch of founders and literally someone could pop their head up and be like, hey, I don't understand this go-to market or does anyone have a tip on what CRM I should use? And then throughout the year, like you're going to have so many thoughts about where to take your uh, career because you have option paralysis because like everyone has done what you want to do or what you like what you're considering. So you have so many people you can chat to. And I think that's definitely a huge highlight, whether it's you want to become a partner at a consulting firm or you want to become a partner at a, a private equity firm or you want to start something or you want to do an incredible uh, uh, NGO. And I, I've had so many chats with Kristen and walks uh, around her incredible NGO. So uh, everyone's open for a walk uh, and that's definitely one of the highlights of just um, talking to people who've done incredible things uh, with their with their career. Fantastic and Anderson you didn't mention that you made history when you were here in the Sheldonian theater during your graduation. Oh yeah yeah it was uh, it, yeah it got an opportunity to kind of close our, our graduation ceremony and, and we did a, a breath uh, a breath work session which was incredible. I was the welfare well-being officer for our cohort in our student council, uh, which is also a really cool opportunity if any of you want to consider it uh, being part of student council. And uh, we did this lovely breath work with everyone and their and their loved ones, which was really cool. It was, I was there, you may not have known, but I was one of those people who did, who oh, did it. Oh, um, but it. But it was history, 800 years in Oxford, it never been done. So it, it was fantastic. Um, brilliant. Christian, would you like to finish us and close, close us out maybe with yours? Yeah, absolutely. So I think so many others have already touched on this, but it's just that access, you know, Oxford is a small city and the fact that you can tap a friend or tap a professor or tap a visiting scholar who has an amazing amount of expertise and deep, deep knowledge. Like I, there isn't another point in my life where I've had that kind of access to deep knowledge, deep understanding, um, from so many people all at the same time. And to have that all happening, 
against a backdrop of Oxford, which is just a beautiful and, and historic city where you really feel like you are part of history unfolding. You know, it's it's a really incredible opportunity. And I think we're, we all consider ourselves really lucky to have been able to experience it. Brilliant, thank you very much. And um, thank you very much to everybody who showed up today, whether it's in the middle of your work day, whether you're starting your day, whether you're like on holidays and you wanted to attend this panel. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much for being so engaging. And a big thank you to all of our alumni. I know a few of them are working today or a few of them are about to start. So thank you very much for taking your time out of, of what must be um, a busy working day. Um, and I hope everybody found, found this all very beneficial. But thank you. I'll let you all get back to the rest of your, your week. <laughs>